All right. Welcome back, everyone. It is the top of the hour. It is 10 a.m. Central Time. And next up, we have uh, Diane from the Gregory Public Library in South Dakota and Carla the, uh, from the A.H. Brown Public Library, also in South Dakota. And they're going to be talking to us about community partnerships. And so this is kind of a, a tag team presentation here. We're going to have um, Diane go ahead and go first. Diane, let me unmute your microphone, which I have not done yet. Apologize for that. Okay, Diane, you should have the ability to uh, share your screen with us, and your microphone is live. Okay, thank you very much, and good morning, everyone. I'm just going to share a little bit about uh, the Gregory Library and some things that we've been doing here. Some of the things might be things that you're doing at your library, and um, we'll see what happens here. I've never done this before, so this is exciting. Um, She's not sharing her audio. It's not moving. Okay, you should have seen a button that says share my screen. Share my screen. Yes, I don't see that. Okay, give me one sec here. Let me uh, take back control for a sec. Okay. And then send you control again. Okay, do you see a window that says you are being made the presenter? Share my screen. No. Uh, you need to make sure you have clicked, selected go to webinar that you've got that as your not your presentation for the moment. Like choose it from your toolbar at the bottom of your screen. There is no toolbar at the bottom of my screen okay. because I'm already in the PowerPoint. Hold on. Okay. Cl yeah. 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 Es escape out of the okay, PowerPoint. Okay. So where do I go now? Okay. Escape out of the PowerPoint for a second and then switch over to the go to webinar software. Okay. Mm -mm. And now technical you... difficulties. <laughs> it's bound to happen. That was working just great. Okay, give me oh. one sec here. Let me let me try switching over again. Okay. Okay. Ah, there we go. Oh, oh, let me. Okay. I've got the. You should have a go to webinar window that says something along the lines of you are being made the presenter. Diane, you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay. I am not seeing okay. anything. Uh -oh. I have the screen sharing is Yes. Change presenter? No. No one screen. can see my screen. Click screen. That's not even open. I can't even click on that. Okay. Uh, we want to let Carla go ahead and do hers first, and I'll see what we're doing <coughs> with this. Okay, give me one sec here. Carla, do you want to try to go ahead? I can try it. Okay. <laughs> okay, you should be seeing a window momentarily that says you are being given control. Okay, what I have is give keyboard and mouse, change presenter. Okay, it should be a separate window from that. I wonder if I shrink everything down if it's under and behind everything. I'm not finding anything here. Okay, uh, Diane, I'm going to try to switch to you. Let's see if we can get it to come up on your screen. Not seeing anything. I got my. I've just got the the thing on the side. The little. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Okay, give us one second here. Um, Diane, is your um, go to webinar interface minimized over to the right hand screen? You can click on the orange arrow to open it up. 
it's open. Okay. Okay. Let me try switching to you one more time here. Okay. I got that little thing that the Nebraska Commission is doing their thing. Okay. Okay. Now, do I have to go to change presenter? No, we or did that. Have... There should be. You already did that. A pop-up window somewhere on your screen that says you have been made the presenter. Do you want to share your screen? Stop sharing the phone. Nope, it's not coming up. Okay, give me one sec here. Oh, wait a minute. I, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. screen sharing. Yeah, okay. It's our fault. We just... Okay, let's try this one last time. Now do you see... Ah, there you okay. go. Our fault. Completely apologize. We hadn't done polls before and we forgot to turn them off. All right, go ahead and do that. There you go. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Off you go. Sorry about that. Wonderful. Okay, can everybody see now? Yes, we are good. Hopefully. There we go. Okay, but I still cannot change pages on my PowerPoint. Just try clicking on your PowerPoint Stop and that should... me do that. Ah, there we go. Okay. All right. It wasn't doing that before even when I was clicking on it. Thank you for all your help. Thank you for your patience, everyone. All right. I'm just going to give you a brief history. Um, our library is very small. It started by a women's club in Gregory in 1909. So it's over 100 years old, the actual history of the library itself. And uh, you know, back in the day, it required a sponsor from the club to even check out books. Council gave its official uh, support, but they thought the ladies' fad would soon dissolve. But within a year, they'd collected about 6,000 books and shelving, and they were very determined. So I am the third librarian since that library started in, one, in 2000, whoop, in 1909. And so that's about 100 years ago. And I started in the 100th year. And there have only been two other librarians before me. So I think that's quite interesting. Uh, we service an area of our town, which is about 1,300 people. Our county has about 4,000, and we have patrons from there as well. And we also live near, are situated near the Nebraska border, so we have people that come from there also. We serve local people. We have a lot of hunters and tourists that come, and a lot of ranch families. On our staff, I have two other people besides myself. You see Ray here. She is my 70 years young person who is very energetic and she can get down on her knees better than I can. And we also have a great high school student assistant who's been working here since she was a freshman. And they are both great. Um, one of the things I first discovered when I came to South Dakota's Gregory situation here is that I would go to events in town and I would tell them what I did and they said, oh, I didn't even know we had a library. And I thought that was very interesting for an institution that had been around for 100 years. So we needed to do something about getting the word out that we had a library. So we started, first of all, with primary partners. Our first one, of course, was the patrons that actually came into the library. Uh, we had received a nice gift uh, from one of the patrons. And with that money gift, we purchased a color scanner, printer, faxer. And we started by making out bookmarks with our hours and with all our services on it and we sent our patrons out with them and they shared them with everybody and that was that was wonderful they were our big word of mouth and um, they were our primary advocates for sure our board of trustees are very good but they were to the point where they were tired because they've been serving over and over because nobody else wanted to do it but we were blessed by a visit from one of our uh, state librarians Daria and she came down and she energized them. I don't know how she did it, but she was great. And uh, most of our board of trustees also serve in lots of other organizations. And she got them very enthused about being advocates for the library. They go to their own organizations where they're also officers and started speaking out about our services. So they started bringing people into the library that way. And some of those organizations now have their meetings in our library. And in fact, one of the organizations I'm going to be doing a talk with um, next Monday night, and none of the members except the one trustee has been a patron in the library, and we're going to encourage them to be, become patrons as well and find out what we have to offer for them. And the city council, which you see pictured below there, and they let me take their picture, which is very nice of them, um, they basically saw us as those ladies over there, out of sight, out of mind. They never had reports from the library. And only the um, one lady there, she had been in the library infrequently. So I'm a pretty shy person, but I started attending every single council meeting. 
and then I would bring monthly stats and finance reports, and I would compare it to what had been done the year before and how they compared. I asked them for questions, and now even though they don't come to the library, they know what's going on, and they're talking about it in town because I find out. And uh, my presence at the meeting is noted in the local newspaper with the minutes and everything, so the community becomes aware of our library in another way. So that's exciting. Now we have a library. People are beginning to know, so we need secondary partners. One of our big ones is our local news outlet, and I'm sure many of you use that. Uh, I talked with the, with the editor, and we make articles every month on anything I can think of, new books, grants that we're getting, National Library Week, Dr. Seuss's birthday, anything that works, you know, summer reading programs. We try to get in there at least once a month, and if not, maybe twice. Um, the last thing we had was we started offering e-books. Uh, we had a huge article, and it was above the fold on the front page with one of our patrons, the first one who started taking out and downloading e-books. And it happened to be a seventh grader in our town. So that was, that was big news. And it got a lot of people into the library. Uh, our tech support personnel, uh, we have the assistant city finance officer, Jennifer, who's pictured here. And she maintains the city website. So I went down and talked with her and said, what can we do to get the library a website? Um, she adds all the news updates, and on her own, she started looking up other library websites to see what she could do to tweak ours. She takes care of all of that for me, and she does a terrific job, and I don't have to worry about it. I just hand her stuff. I say, please put this in, get it in there somewhere, and she's always working on that. Uh, the city likes that because it gets more hits to their website and the Chamber of Commerce also. So that's kind of a win-win situation for them. Um, and I've just started getting emails from people who are going to our website, and I had never done that before. Had people email me questions about the library. So that's exciting. The Chamber of Commerce in the area just reorganized late last year. So we joined it in 2012 in January. And we try to attend as many events as possible and be visible. The more visible you are, the more people know you there. The next thing we decided to do, we needed a needs discovery to find out what our community actually needs. So you know, it's very simple. Observe the people in the community, the ones that walk in your door. Listen to them talk about their daily lives. And I know those of you in small towns know, you kind of go into bartender mode. You hear all their problems. It's a very small situation. People feel free to talk to you in many, many situations uh, where they wouldn't talk to somebody else. They're familiar with you. They come in every week, and they know you. Um, ask them close questions, but also ask yourself in the library, what can we do to help some of these situations? And then make a plan of how we can provide the service or point them to somebody else who can. And if we're going to do it, then hook up with a partner that can help them serve. These are just some of the community issues we discovered. I didn't put them all in here, and I'll try to go through them very quickly. Um, but we tried to find some plans. You can't do everything. You have to kind of pick and choose. And then you know, of course, your budget is very small, and it's pretty static. You have to do what you can with what you have. So that's why sometimes you do need extra partners in the community or maybe throughout the season. First thing we did was we had problems with our shut-ins. They needed reading material brought to them. Um, and so we developed a service called Books on Wheels. This is my friend Elsie, and she gets Books on Wheels. Um, it is a situation where I go out Thursday mornings and I bring books to people. I bag them up and I bring them what they like to read, uh, find out through a survey of uh, visit that I do with them, and uh, bring them the things they like. And as you go, you know, in a small library, you kind of know what people like to read, and you hone down on what they are interested in. And the survey helps, but just doing it week after week, you know what they like to read, and you, you those are the books you set aside for them. Otherwise, I would be carrying suitcases full of books instead of just bags. But it works out great. I just set aside that morning, and in order to get people into the program, first we advertised in the newspaper, but of course that doesn't reach everybody because some people can't even read the print in the newspapers. They need large print. So uh, that didn't cover everybody. So we went to our local ministerium, a group of guys, gals that... Um, about seven or eight of them, and they meet once a month, and had them go out and visit their shut-ins and tell them of our service, put it in their bulletins at the churches. And then we, I went to the nursing facilities and talked with them to see what um, people that they knew of that could be used, talked to their staff, uh, made announcements at their events. And um, then when they get to the point where they cannot read the books anymore, then we connect with the state library and we try to get them the talking books. Uh, so that they can get the digital players and things like that. And I'm sure a lot of you are doing these same things. Our next new goal that we're working on, though, is we're going to try and bring the 
nursing home in and they're going to have some free visits just to come in and visit the library. It's free for them. It's a free trip. It doesn't cost the nursing home anything and we'd maybe do some book talks with them and that's what we're thinking of in that area. We have some very busy moms in town and I'm sure that's something that you all face. You know, they're busy doing their um, sports events and working and everything else and they have no time to get to the library. A lot of them already had ebook devices and I really enjoyed uh, Karen's talk. That was really interesting. Most of ours already knew how to work their stuff. I was the one that didn't know. But they were great with it. So one of the things was they needed to access books. Ebooks took care of some of that. The trustees and the city council were our partners. Um, they allowed us to go ahead and join the consortium that we have in South Dakota for the ebooks, which is through Overdrive also. And they also talk, told us to get a survey going and find out how we could change hours so that we could reach more people and accommodate their hours instead of what we wanted and what we wanted to work. And so the patrons helped us with that. They, we did a survey. We changed things around. Uh, we didn't get any more money for wages or anything like that, but we took hours off where no one was coming in put them into hours when people would. So now we're open later in one evening a week. We're still open on Saturdays a little bit. And instead of the two days a week that we started when I started in 2006, now we're open five days a week. So I think that's pretty great. Um, and still managing to keep within our budget. And that's always important to that city council. And um, we also noticed that the most books were downloaded in the ebook situation was after our hours were closed, you know, and I think that's also very significant. Um, the Gregory Book Club was approached and they paid for our membership for the first full year of uh, the consortium. And they were our old women's book club that had started, or the women's club that had started the library. So they're always looking for ways that they can help us. And our new goal is hopefully someday in the, in the future we're going to automate our collections so people can renew and place holds at home, which would be wonderful for those people who work and can't get to the library for very long time. Unemployment is also a big situation for everybody and of course our services we want to assist with resumes and job searches if we can. Our partners is our business and development group which is um, they help with applications for trade school assistance and give scholarships so we have a connection with them. We provide their uh, paperwork in the library and point them to those partners if people need those. Um, community business posts, we have a job opening uh, bulletin board in the front of the library and People post things there if there are businesses. We post things from the newspapers for jobs wanted. Uh, people can put things up there if they want, you know, you know, anything, grass cutting, babysitting, those kinds of things. People know to look there, and that helps also. Also, you know, have the South Dakota Department of Labor on our side. They have a, a simple little sheet that give, we hand out to people who are coming in looking for jobs, and step-by-step, uh, -step, how do they sign up to get an account with them, and get information sent to them through the computer and their emails. Um, the staff kind of does a little bit of everything. We prepared a sample generic resume to hand to people so they could simply just fill it out and plug in their names or whatever on a computer. And it's a paper copy. They take it and then they do what they want. The reason we started doing this is because we had people who would come in that had no idea how to use a computer and they would say, I have to send in a resume and fax it by such and such a time today can you help me? And we just said, okay, we can, but. <laughs> so we started out by making up a resume and that was the easiest thing to do, just very generic and then they could plug it in themselves so they have ownership of it and they do it themselves. It's enough, you know, just trying to teach them how to use the mouse and then get them to type in. We couldn't sit there and type the entire resume for them. As you know, when you're only one person at the library at a time, it, it gets kind of crazy. So, but that we do try to help. The trustees help us because they um, allowed us to change our policies. We print and fax first resumes and applications for free, and after that we kind of do a half price thing. Um, and then we also um, connect with the State Library who does databases for Learning Express, test prep, things like that. We point them to those. And uh, the community leaders kind of got together in the Project Compass meeting not too long ago, and I'm sure you're all familiar with that, and discussed the needs that we have in our community to help the unemployed. And some of them are taking on some of that responsibility with classes and things. And our new goal is we decided as a staff is we're going to become more familiar with unemployment insurance online forms so that we can assist people with those. Or, or maybe even if we had some money, give some people some free flash drives because that seems to be a problem that comes up quite frequently. 
Returning young adults, um, basically what we need to do for them is point to partners that can help. We have quite a few young adults that have left home, gone to college, decide they want to come back and raise their children here. They're looking most of the time to start their own businesses or to uh, train for jobs. And I have the picture of the welder there is because we're trying to start, the Chamber of Commerce is trying to start a welding class here. And the community is trying to, they want to start a trade school here. And they're very ambitious about this. We're trying to get behind this. Um, some of the things that we can still do at this point, though, is we point them to the state government and the Economic Development website, online business tools. And again, the Business and Development Group, who have applications to uh, give money for some grants to start up businesses. And of course, the Chamber of Commerce um, with that welding school and things. Our new goal is we want to try and contact some of the local finance officers that we've been talking to and uh, get some pro provisions for loan information or conduct some seminars and maybe have them do that to help people who are trying to finance a new business. Low income and financial difficulty is always a problem in a small rural town. A uh, basic thing that we can do is point to partners that can help. Uh, we have the food pantry hours posted on our bulletin board so people don't have to feel embarrassed to ask. Same thing with the thrift store hours, and they put up a special flyer every week. Uh, the ministerium provides funds for immersion, emergencies, and they also provide scholarships to go to Financial Peace University for people who are having trouble budgeting. Uh, state library databases help with the World Book Life Skills. We can point them to that in the library when they come in. Um, the trustees. Um, Revise our policies. They allow us to print uh, government assistant forms for free. And of course, you can go to Bridge to Benefits and help people go through that. Uh, South Dakota Bridge to Benefits help them connect to um, those benefits that they can receive. And they go through that on their own. And we don't have to see their business and, and know about all that stuff. Um, and we kind of try to help people as staff You know, work with people training them one-on-one -on -one a little bit. We did order them tax forms this year. A lot of people do not have computers. They don't put things online. And when that happened last year and everybody had to have all of a sudden all their own tax forms, that was a disaster. People were coming in on the 14th saying, I need tax forms, I need tax forms. And of course, the library hadn't had them for years. So this year we ordered a whole bunch from the IRS people and they sent us a lot. And our goal for next year is to order even more because a lot of people to not do their taxes online. Okay, we also have homeschool families, and basically for them, we want to provide access to materials. Um, school and patrons are our partners because they let us know which kids are homeschooled. Uh, we use the state labor library databases and try to train people in using those so they can use them and access it at home with their e-cards. Um, we would like to do some training sessions for the parents and how to use those databases, and that's kind of our new goal there. Tourists and hunters is a big part of uh, our community income economics. And we have the Oscar Micheaux Festival here in August. And we have a lot of active sports and hunting and things like that. Basically, people are looking for communication. And for this, we needed Wi-Fi. And we didn't really know how to go about it. City Council said they would pay for it. We wanted a secure system that had safeguards in it. Um, so we paid a little more for that because we had somebody come in and work it all up, and they took care of that. Trustees changed our policy so that we could uh, revise our internet use policy, our registration policy. The city council does not, and I know that this is a big no-no in many areas, and I understand that. Our city council does not want us to charge for people who are out-of-town visitors that are our patrons. They want the people to come in and use our restaurants, our stores, and all of our businesses, and they do not want us charging anybody that comes in from out of town. So we do not. And uh, we try to provide things that people can use when they do come into our area as tourists. We have maps of the local area. We provide re reference assistance. We have copies, copies of all the menus of the local restaurants on file here. And uh, they're open hours, so people know when they can access those things. And the Chamber of Commerce is listing us as uh, a resource on their website. Uh, one of the things we do want to do next is get library bookmarks to all the local lodges, the hunting lodges and things with our services on them. So people know now that we do have Wi-Fi and they come in here with their phones and keep up with their business at home when they're out here hunting. And last of all, of course, it's probably one of the most important ones is education assist for all ages because uh, in our mission statement, learning and increased learning is one of our main goals. So we want to provide learning resources. Um, and of course, the city council, again, is our partner. They 
free internet and computers for education needs. Trustees provide our free meeting room for business training classes. We have a local grocery store that does all their training, their in-service stuff. They all come to our uh, library and use our meeting room for that. Uh, we have alumni groups that come in and search their ancestry. They found out about the databases and that was quite a learning event for them and they, they have a lot of fun doing that. They come in a group and and they're quite noisy and have a good time. Um, we also do proctoring services and things like that. Uh, we do story time events. Our local carpet store, store just gave us carpet squares so we can use them for um, our kids coming to story time. Um, we just connected with the school not too long ago. We're doing some special things with them. Uh, they had um, a request that we find some people to help them come in and listen to some children that want to read during their reading times. So we set up a uh, a listing here and, and advertised and then people sign up and they go over to there and I'm sorry my phone is ringing of all things and we uh, have them go over and listen to the kids read so they just sign up here and do it over there it's kind of a partnership thing and another thing that we're doing with them is uh, they have a reading Olympics that they do in our school and a person just happened to be a substitute that jumped in and had to take over for that Reading Olympics event and she had a lot of books to read and write questions for in order to hold the Reading Olympics event. So she came to the library and she said, what can you do to help? And I said, we'll get some people together and we'll read the books and we'll write the questions for you. And she loved it. And that's what we've been doing for the last couple of weeks. Everybody's taking out kids books and reading them and we're all having a good time with that. So the next new goal we're going to have for this area is we we really would like to get a grant to get some extra laptops for those who are taking online courses and testing um, so we can do some more training sessions for databases, um, things like that. Uh, more partnering with the school, those are some things that we're looking at in Education Assist. And there are so many more I think we can do. Um, just want to show that there are partnerships that help libraries grow in our case. And you can see by the stats, things have changed. The only thing I really saw that was interesting. The computer users has gone down, but that is the number of users, not the number of sessions. We've noticed that there's been a decrease in gaming and an increase in the amount of time people are spending on the computer doing research and job searching and things like that. So I think now that we're in our South Dakota state, we're going to be checking in how many sessions are being used instead of the number of users. I think that will make a significant change and be more realistic. And we didn't do all of these things just to look at the stats grow, but we want to be a part of the community and we want to be able to help people when they have needs and we can help. If somebody come, comes in and says, can you do this, then I say, let's see if we can. I just love my job and thank you for listening. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, Diana, I'm going to go ahead and mute your mic. Carla, are you there? I'm here. Okay, and I'm going to switch over to you. You should see that I'm the presenter now screen. Okay. Yeah, and just click the, the show my screen, and then you should be all set. That's me. Can you hear me still? Yep, yep, we're all good. You're good to go. Okay. Um, I'm Carla Bieber. I'm the library director for the A.H. Brown Public Library in Millbridge, South Dakota. Our library was built by an individual named A.H. Brown. He financed it and overseen the site work and everything himself. It's one of the very few libraries that are built by a sole individual. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be talking about a little bit about the community partnerships as Diane had, but more from the other end, what, we're, what we need. The topics I've got are working with the job searcher, no, everything eventually comes back to the library, and then I've got a little section on um, dummy books or full books. Okay. <laughs> Job searching, it's <laughs> stressful at best, especially if it's your first job or if you've been out of work for a while and have done everything you can think of to find this new job. This, to start with searching, when a patron comes into a library for help, it seems it is usually in one of those two situations. 
some simple ideas to help with the search process are printing out the list of open positions from the local Department of Labor or have the bulletin board like Diane had suggested. We actually have a computer link right on our desktop for the patrons to the Department of Labor so they can get right in there. We also have a link to our local newspaper and to the Chamber of Commerce. We have our local newspaper in print form here and some other area papers from the state like the Argus Leader and the Red City Journal. It's nice to also have a letter of inquiry example because we've encountered patrons here that didn't know they could write a letter to find out if there's a job available or if the job would soon become available. So having an idea for them has helped out. For resume writing, as Diane had mentioned, in a small library, you feel like you have to be everything to everyone. You don't have time to write the resumes for them or give them support through the entire process. Some of the ideas we've heard from the other libraries or we've tried ourselves are to have print examples of a well-written resume for the patrons to look at or having links under favorites to resume examples on the computer. Offering a, a class by someone from the Department of Labor or a school guidance counselor or a teacher can help also. We've actually installed a resume writer program and you can get one with a little wizard greatly. We have an icon right on the desktop that links it to there so it's easy access. Um, Diane had mentioned they do some free printing and faxing of their resume. Other libraries have told us that they will print it on resume quality paper that they provide free. One of the great hints we come up with for those who write resume is to have a thesaurus close by. It helps give a little life to the resume and you can only hear, I started uh, so many times. It's easier if the person writing the resume can use the words created or implemented or organized. Just give a little more life to it. Uh, as far as the applications themselves, a list of good tips for, for the application could be made. They could be tips from other patrons or even employers or job service, Department of Labor. But one of the tips that we have is don't leave anything blank on the application. If there is a place on your application that isn't pertinent to you, just write in not applicable. And if you are sending an application and a resume to the same place, have the match. You do not want any discrepancies from one to the other. It looks unprofessional. And another thing, tailor your applications as well as your resume to the specific job you're looking for. You can't ask to be an auto mechanic and a nurse using the same wording. They may be similar, but not enough. We've also thought that maybe keeping a letter of application on hand as an example would be another good idea. This is a couple steps of our patron computers. Here is our um, resume writer. It's Winway, Winway Resume Deluxe. And it happens to actually be the same one that our local Department of Labor uses. So the patron can put their saved data in our computer and their computer and work on it in either place. There's the link to the Department of Labor, our Mobridge Chamber, and our Mobridge Tribune, which is our local paper. On the topic of no, we have it never hurts to ask. Sometimes no means later, and there may be help available, just not what you're looking for. It never hurts to ask. Even if you are told no, at least you try. I find I 
love the quote, the only way to fail is to never try, which attributed, at least from what I found, to a doer duck who is not some obscure poet or somebody you've never heard of. Instead, it's a little cartoon duck mascot for Cafe Press. If you get a no, ask if you can know why. That way you can learn and adapt your approach so next time you may not be denied. It might just be your wording of the request, it might be timing, it might be funds available. It might also be that another group has already talked to whoever you were trying to ask and they're just honestly over -commit committed. I, however, have never heard of anyone say, I won't because I hate the library. You can't do anything about most of the reasons, but you can do something about your wording. By making your, re your request specific to who you're asking, you can also, because you can't ask a car bar in an ice cream store for the exact same thing or ask in the exact same way. If you're asking for someone for repeat, have to remind them how valuable their past support was and thank them for that before asking if they could count or if you could count on their help once again. Sometimes no just means later. By watching what group or persons you're asking for help, it help takes you a long way. If the group you're asking for help is hosting their annual basket weaving convention the same day you're holding your project, it isn't going to happen. It's going to help you. But at the same time, that group may not be able to help then, but after a suggestion from you, they might be able to come in and hold a short class on basket weaving in your library, which will help get a few more in. There may be help available, just not what you were looking for. You may have been asking for volunteers or material, but not able to get what you were looking for. But inside of that conversation, you may learn things which will help you later. You may be asking for materials, but find out the person that you've been visiting with loves to do stained glass or something on the weekend. And they love to share how easy that is with other people. You may be asking for a fake recycled object like bobbins for a craft and find out that the group this person not only saves bobbins but they save many other recycled things which could be useful. If you have, to, if you have the space to store these extra things they're great to have around. The slide I have showing right now just says no with the question mark and a man at the crossroads. A no may put you at the crossroad, but being flexible enough to change direction or modify your plan will make your life a whole lot stressful. Next one is everything comes back. Tracking who will support your project and everyone knows someone else. Tracking who will support your project is fairly simple. Just keep a list of people, not just your patrons, who have volunteered or offered to help out and what they are willing to do. I personally love it when I get the statement, oh, I'll help with anything you need. This is a statement that the person says doesn't realize how dangerous it can be. We had a very prominent businessman make that statement. Well, he ended up playing Santa one Christmas. The role was a little out of his norm, but he did great. I'd like to hold those that make that statement to it, but in reality, I do give them a chance to back out. A few easy to track and place individuals are the people who participate in local art shows or craft fairs. They are great support comes looking for someone to help with kids' crafts or projects. Retired teachers are an amazing resource for summer tutoring programs. We had a wonderful woman who taught reading for a number of years who volunteered her time 
and Hill Kids for the last three, four summers. And then I think every librarian I've talked to has had that one kid who's a computer whiz who always wants to get into the library computers and make them better. Well, that kid would be a very wonderful and successful teacher to the older people that want to learn how to work computers. And everyone knows someone else. If looking for help, remember the library is many times the starting and the ending point. A patron may not be the one to help you, but he may know someone else who would be perfect for what you need. And if you're lucky, he'll talk to that individual for you. You may also be talking to a patron only about she is part of a, a club or a group. And she could appeal to them to volunteer at the library on our behalf. Even if you don't get the help you're looking for, you have just been library advocates. And don't forget the children. Children love to ask if they can volunteer or help. Just make sure if you allow them to do something they can do. Children also love to volunteer their family members. Such as, my mom loves to sew and she could make you whatever you want. Need anyone to sew? I've actually heard that one. This is a picture of our volunteer list. Just a quick short, so-and-so wants to do this and the date they offered and when we've asked them to do it. Down in the corner is a photo of our library web page. Here it is. This is our community links. We've got a number of places on there. But when you link to another, it's very important and good manners to ask permission to link to another website from your site. It helps create cooperation, advocacy, and community involvement. And if you can ask them to link back, it's also free advertising. Let's shrink that one back down. Now into our dummy or our faux books. They help replace information that outdates quickly. The cost is minimal, and they can be added to the shelves with barcodes, catalog, card catalog cards, or ID another type. Replacing information that outdates quickly. As many librarians know, legal books only last two to three years before something in them inevitably changes. Medical books outdate almost as soon as printed, and computer books on average are outdated at the time of printing. These simple facts make it near if not completely impossible for a small but budgeted library to keep up with the most current information on those topics. The cost of a, the dummy books are minimal the, because law and medical books are a large expense, whereas our dummy books cost us very little to put together. Our cost was a few phone calls to various authority figures, like the hospital for medical websites, a couple of lawyers for legal websites, we called social services and the state library, and we talked to a few others for some other links. It cost us ink and paper to print them on, and some empty VHS cases that we have an enormous surplus of. But when doing this, you have to be careful with your websites, because all the websites listed should be reputable and have accurate information. They can be added to the shelves with barcodes, card catalog cards, and IDs of another type. We made basic card catalog cards for each under the title of whatever the object is, and the author is listed as web information. Each dummy was given a JADUI number, barcode is labeled, and placed on our shelves for checkout, like any other library material. They can be used in the library or from a home computer and 
ours have actually been checked out. It is easier to have this type of list it would be to have tried to place them all on the favorites of our computer because we have 20 gummy books. Some only have four or five websites. Others have 15 or more. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a photo of a couple of our dummy books, the government and rural issues on our shelves. And this is what the front looked like. This is economic assistance. There's our barcode, and you can see the spine label. And this is what the inside looked like. The, the one you see the inside of is employment. It's just a list of the websites. This one flips over. And we've got our date due stamp in there. Let's see if I can get this to cooperate. Here is um, the top two aren't actually part of it. I don't know why they came up. But the other 20 here are our web information. And I'll just click on history. It's just the general information. It's web information as the author, history, list of websites, and the call number is 970 for web. That's quick and easy, and they circulate. And as I said, you don't have to go out of your way for it. They're very inexpensive used VHS cases. But I talked to someone who had used old Reader's Digest condensed books and taken pages and glued them together and just had it that way. There's many ways to do it. And I guess that would be everything. And any questions? All right. Thank you both uh, to, to you both, Diane and Carla. Really appreciate it. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Yes, we, we know there were some audio issues during that last bit. Um, we, we do what we can on this end to, to try to get those worked out. It, it, it really sounded like it was an Internet connection problem this time around. Uh, we will do our best to clean up the audio for the, uh, with post-production uh, on that. So uh, thank you for, for your patience for the, those of you who are having some audio issues. Um, so with that, do we have any uh, qu a, a couple questions for the audience I think have come in in the few minutes we have? Um, people are interested in your, um, your dummy books and they'd like to know a little bit more about uh, why you decided to do, uh, why you decided to present the information that way and how you keep them current. Uh, when I took over as library director, our nonfic hadn't been weeded. And as we started to weed through them, we realized that we were losing information greatly. So we started to look at what it would cost to replace everything we had to. And there is no way I could have afforded to do it. And we went, well, medical books, we've got great resources with Medline and um, and um, the Mayo Clinic has a site and there's a number of others but they're the same information that I would be ordering so I'll put them in there every once in a while we'll go in and check that the website is still working because nothing would be more frustrating than to give a list fee and they come back and say um, this one's dead this one has been taken over and it is now telling me that this is how to grow flowers or you know anything but it's very it's very easy for us and we just keep an eye on them did that answer your question yeah I think that's yes, it uh, thank yeah. you well, and we have one more how, how do you keep them current The, the dummy books? Yeah. We, we just, I saved my list of websites, and if one of the sites changes, or if I talk to somebody and they say, this one is better, we'll just go in and make the changes and print out a new sheet, because it's just basic paper, and just stick the new sheet in. <laughs> and we did have, we had another question about the IRS forms. Um, we wondered, 
if you had a huge demand in the library for the printed forms, or uh, were you did you just have some and print some off the web? People were kind of interested in how you did that. Uh, that was actually Diane that talked about it, but okay. we've had the same situation here. And they told us last year that they were not going to even send libraries any copies, but we got them, which has been great help because the post office doesn't get them, and the tax preparers don't give them out unless they prepare them for you. So we got a, quite a number, mostly the 1040 forms, but we get a large book that has a whole lot of miscellaneous that we can print from. And in a few cases, we've even had to go in and search for the form online, and then we'll print it out for our patrons. Okay. And Diane, Diane, did you want to address that real quick? No, that, was, that pretty much covers it. We did order forms this year because the problem was a lot of people were asking for um, the information booklets, and those are so costly to print out for somebody because there are pages and pages. So we did send for those, and I just went on on the phone and I ordered a, about how many I thought we would need, but obviously it wasn't enough, so we'll be ordering more next year. But um, yeah, the, our post office had a few copies, and that was it. They don't have, and they're just about out already, so. All right, ladies, thank you very much. That, that was a great presentation, and that's going to round out our, our second session here. Again, thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you to the audience who uh, submitted their questions. So, Carla and Diane, I'm going to go ahead and uh, mute your mic, and Krista, you have a... Them yes, and, and again, if you, um, we, we, as we get the content put up on the website, you'll be able to uh, submit further questions. We'll have our speakers keep an uh, eye on that. Um, so, oh, we have a... Sorry, oh. the, it wasn't actually a question. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> we have uh, one question here. Someone would love to clone you two because <laughs> she's very proud of her South Dakota librarians and she thinks she really rocks. All right, all right, good. Kudos there. <laughs>